ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to q2 fy25 earnings conference call of supriya line science limited as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to ms prachi ambre from orient capital thank you and over to you ms ambre thank you shlok good afternoon everyone on behalf of subriya life science limited i extend a very warm welcome to all the participants before we begin the call i would like to give a short disclaimer this call may contain some of the forward looking statements which are completely based upon our belief expectations as of today the statements are not a guarantee of our future performance and involve unforeseen risks and uncertainty with this i would like to hand over the call to satish sir executive chairman and whole time director for his opening remarks over to you sir thank you good afternoon and warm welcome to all the participants thank you for joining us today to discuss the q2 and h1 financial year 25 results of supriya life science limited to take us through the results and answers to your questions along with me dr saloni wag managing director mr krishna ragunathan chief financial officer and our investor relation team orient capital i hope everyone had an opportunity to go through the financial results and investor presentation which we have uploaded on the stock exchange and on our company website we are excited to share that q2 financial year 25 has been another successful quarter for us revenue surged 19% year on year to indian rupees 166 crores we have achieved an ebitda margin of 39% and a cash margin of 28% underscoring our operational excellence and strong financial performance Supriya Life Science Limited is committed to strengthening its position as a strong API manufacturer. Our strategic focus remains on expanding our product portfolio, with while enhancing our presence in regulated markets and maintaining robust margins. Over the years, Supriya has transformed from a generic OTC provider to an innovator with a high margin. regulated market our export contribution has increased to 83% in q2 financial year 25 up from 81 in q2 financial year 24 latam has shown strong growth which its share increasing to 19% this quarter from 13% in the same period last year we have also seen positive momentum in other regions including north america and africa further driving our global expansion our diverse customer base of 1700 plus clients across 128 countries provides a strong foundation for our strategic shift we have developed a promising pipeline of new products that extends beyond our expertise in anti stimulants in corporating anesthetics anti anxiety medications anti diabetic and more to further accelerate our cmo and cdmo business the new formulation facility in ambarnath has already started commercial production from q4 financial year 24 additionally the validation of module e is underway with commercial production anticipated by q3 financial year 25 upon successful completion of this capacity revamping our total production capacity will nearly double reaching approximately 1020 kl we are confident in achieving our 20% plus revenue growth guidance maintaining strong margins we expect this year to be our highest in terms of ebitda and cash margin compared to the previous year our goal is to double the revenue to 1000 crore by financial year 27 focusing on high margin 
niche market we remain committed to expanding exciting molecules in regulated market and fast track the commercialization of new products as we transition into a leading api manufacturer with exceptional capabilities we are leveraging cmo cdmo opportunities to diversify and strengthen our revenue stream i will now hand over to our cfo shri krishna ragunathan to present the financial highlights of q2 financial year 25 thank you sir hello everyone and good afternoon i will now share the operational performance of the quarter and following which we will open the floor for questions and answers in q2 fy25 our revenue from operations rose to inr 166 crore reflecting a 19% year on year growth from inr 140 crore in q2 fy24 this momentum carried through the first half of financial year 25 with revenue reaching around inr 327 crore a 20% increase over inr 272 crore in h1 fy24 our ebitda performance was also impressive with q2 fy25 ebitda doubling to inr 64.7 crore from inr 31.7 crore in the same quarter last year resulting in an ebitda margin of 39% up from 23% for h1 fy25 ebitda reached inr to 127.3 crore a 68% increase compared to inr 76 crore in h1 fy24 on the bottom line pat nearly doubled in q2 fy25 reaching inr 46 crore compared to inr 24 crore in q2 fy24 our pat margin for the quarter improved significantly to 28% up from 17% a year ago for the first half of fy25 pat was inr 91 crores a 73% increase from inr 52 crores in h1 fy24 with pat margins reaching 28% up from 19% our annualized asset turnover ratio has strengthened to 2.2 this quarter compared to 2.1 in the corresponding period last year we continue to uphold a strong financial position with a debt to equity ratio of 0.01 Significantly, we have maintained a conservative approach to borrowing by utilizing only letter of credits and bank guarantees without tapping into working capital limits. Now we can open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you, all of you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchscreen phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue. may press star and participants are requested to use handset while asking the question we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles first question comes from the line of aditya pal from msa capital partners in goa hello thank you so much for the opportunity and congratulations to the management firm for the great set of results so uh, sir wanted to quickly understand from you that uh, we got 15 products that are now backward integrated uh, they generate 74% of our revenues and this has sharply improved from 69 last quarter uh, wanted to understand from you is is it is that the reason uh, that our that our gross margin improved significantly and a sub point to that would be that i all these backward integrated products that the 15 15 products that we highlighted are they all registered in regulated markets uh so yes backward integ i would like to take that uh, question uh yes backward integration definitely helps in improving the margins because uh, we do not uh, outsource any advanced intermediates from outside we make our own advanced intermediates right from the basic stage so backward integration definitely helps in bringing the costs down one of the other reasons also for the margin improvement is uh, you know better penetration into regulated markets if you see uh, for most of the regulated markets like north america latin america europe our sales has gone up so penetration into regulated markets where the average selling prices for the products are higher also adds to the margin improvement uh yes most of the products that we manufacture about 15 we are fully backward integrated and most of these uh, are already present in regulated market however we are still uh, expecting usdmf uh, we are also expecting registration of some of these products in uh, markets like japan europe uh, by 
hopefully quarter two of next year we should mostly have cps and usdms for all the products but yes the 15 products are mainly into more regulated market perfect perfect uh, hi siloni also wanted to know so y'all y'all went for the chhi milan uh, conference and i was seeing the ba- banners of uh, so priyan linkedin also and phenomenal uh, i would say the entire team that went with you so wanted to know how was the trip what was the feedback that, that you received uh, from the formulator from the innovator that came there uh, any new any new takeaways from the trip yes uh, i think the show was a great opportunity to showcase all the new products that we have launched uh, we have had a very good presence in cphi for over 20 years and all our customers have also seen the growth happening in the company we had a lot of new products coming up in our portfolio from anesthetic anti diabetic categories plus the launch of our new ambarnath site uh, which is focused on contract manufacturing for finished formulation so a lot of new opportunities are on the cards we have been approached by a lot of new companies for the newer products as well as for some of our existing products we are seeing great traction in regulated markets all in all i would say that the show was a very successful one for us and you can see the commercial implications of the show happening in the next coming quarter perfect uh, i'll come back in the queue i've got a couple of more questions thank you the next question is from the line of itesh cheda from lucky invest please go yeah hi uh, i have few questions if you could tell us the capacity utilization pre and post this expansion that is being undertaken uh, my second question is uh, whether the cost of these of the expanded capacity 2020 kilo liter uh, is it a part of pnl or is it going to be a part of pnl so i'll answer the first part of the question uh, before uh, module e got introduced Uh, we were at almost 550 kl capacity and our mm-hmm. capacity utilization was upwards of 76% which is the uh, optimized capacity utilization <laughs> considering that it is a multi purpose facility uh, the module e has just been added we have completed the validation uh, we are expecting to start the commercial production in quarter 3 so once that is done it would take us at least 1 and a half to 2 years to has maximum utilization of this new added capacity and for the second half krishna will answer basically when it comes to the cost of module e see uh, there could be another uh, couple of crores which can get added up to the pnl as of now uh, there would be what do you call around 30 40 personal which we might add and uh, the power cost which will increase uh, basically uh, we also would see a saving in power cost overall because we have already initialized uh, solar uh, power for the plant and that will give us some bit of a saving which has already started so to answer your question we yeah, might be a couple of crores on the opex front can get added up uh, apart from uh, a bit on the power side couple of crores per month couple of crores per quarter not per month they are not per month it could be per quarter Okay. Okay. Uh, so in your last call, you had mentioned that your H2 will be better than H1. So are you uh, are you, uh, are you sticking to that uh, thought process, or there is any change there? Yeah. Okay. On the top line, yes, of course, we will have a improvement in the uh, when compared to H1. And what about margin? Margins. On the margin front, also uh, definitely we think, like our chairman said in his speech, also in terms of the absolute beta value and the pat value, we definitely think that this would be our best year so far. Okay, so basically H two should be better than H one on an overall basis. Yes. Okay, and the last question is, uh, you know, when you look at the half yearly margin number and when you look at your commentary for H two. What is that you guys uh, have given a guidance of 30% only in the EBITDA margin? So how should we read both these uh, statements? So uh, we have also informed them after our first quarter results that uh, we are definitely expecting better margin profile for the rest of the year. Uh, quarter on quarter margin variation will be there because it is purely a function of product mix and geographic mix. 
But like I said, if you look at the annualized number uh, in terms of the absolute EBITDA and PAT value, it will definitely be our highest so far. Okay. And this expanded capacity of 500 uh, KL, uh, can you uh, help us with the utilization ramp up possibility? Year one, year two, year three, and what is the total revenue potential out of this capacity? So revenue potential at this point, I will not be able to say because it depends on the product which, that we are going to put in this plant. But it will take us at least two years to get to complete utilization of this new module. It will start, the commercial production will start in quarter three. So two years means, should we say FY27 is where you reach the full utilization? Yes. On an exit, exit quarterly basis 27 or a full year basis 27? Two year basis uh, by FY27, by end of FY27, we'll be able to utilize full capacity of this new... Okay, uh, so, exit, so that means exit quarterly basis. The exit quarterly FY27 will be a full year, full utilization. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirali Shah from Kashika Stock Trophy. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations on this great set of numbers. I have uh, two very good cool questions. Uh, first one is on the Brazil. So we have, um, we were registering some eight products in the Brazil geography. So any update on that registration status and um, if you could add on. Um, any any color on the market opportunity for these products is I give you in uh, quantitative terms. Yes, uh, so like we have mentioned in the past also, uh, the Latin American market is one of our pro focused markets and we have done extensive registration in Brazil for at least nine of our products. We even cleared uh, the Anvisa audit without zero observations beginning of this year. And you can see, you know, the revenue growth happening in the Latin American markets. It has gone up from 9% to almost 19% uh, in this quarter. And you can expect a similar trend moving forward also when some of the other products also start getting traction. Okay, and um, just one more on the cancer detection. Kit. So any progress on the clinical trials? And um, I guess we had an identified partner also. So any progress on that? Uh, so yes, in the mom at the moment we are in the process of filing all our international patents. Uh, so we have already selected a first cut of countries, uh, countries like Korea, Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, where we are now, uh, you know, filing the patent in those respective countries. Uh, so we expect that this activity would be completed in the next two or three months. Uh, after which, you know, we will start with the clinical trials and all the other related, uh, you know, information. So in the next two to three years, you can expect the commercialization of the project. But yes, it is very much on track and the filing of the patent has already started in a lot of other markets other than India as well. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that answer all the questions. The next question is from the line of Aditya Pal from MSA Capital Partners. Please go. Thank you much again for the opportunity. Uh, so, so I was trying to reconcile the capacity that uh, that is there in the presentation, uh, as well as uh, as well as that you were saying you are discussing that uh, capacity will be increased to thousand and twenty uh, KL per day. So uh, I am not able to reconcile. Can you help me with the numbers? Uh, so it is approximately 550. Uh, currently, our capacity out of the A, B, C, D blocks uh, where we are operating, it is approximately 540 KL. And then we are adding about 400 odd KL capacity with the new module E, which is coming in. And then we are also adding the Ambarna site, uh, which is about 70 KL. So all in all put together, it would be about 1020 KL in terms yeah. of capacity. Because I'm getting thousands so with all the numbers that I have. Uh, all right, I'll take this offline with you, so that's not an issue. Uh, just another data point that I wanted was that, uh, so 83% from exports, if I were to buy, bifurcate it between regulated and semi-regulated market, what would be the split? So 
so uh, for us uh, approximately 50 to 51 percent would be a uh, regulated market and then the balance would be the semi regulated markets and a little bit of the domestic market but uh, over 50 percent uh, i think about 52 or 53 percent is regulated understood uh, uh, one last question that i had was trying to understand the raw material status of of supriya so which would be which so which would be that one key raw material that that supriya requires to start because we are backward integrated so we are not really relied we are not really reliant on our on the imports but if i were to say which is that one key raw material that you need to start production no so for us if you look at our product portfolio and it is also one of our key strengths it is very diverse in terms of uh, the processes we are able to handle in house uh, there is no one common raw material that there is a high dependence each product has its own starting raw material and we are backward integrated up to the basic chemical stage and uh, more i mean mostly these are these basic chemicals are available across different industries they are not very specific to pharma as well so they are cheaply and widely available across the globe so as such i would not say there is any dependence on any key starting material for us perfect perfect that's 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 very helpful yeah that's it for my side wishing you and uh, the management the very best of luck thank you thank you before we take the next question we would like to remind all our participants that you may press star and one to ask your question the next question is from the line of precha from equity master please go ahead. thank you for the opportunity uh, so my question is if you could uh, share some updates on how ctmo and cmo opportunities are shaping up i think you had earlier mentioned that there would be some revenue contribution from third quarter so you know what kind of visibility do we have for this year and maybe for the next 2 or 3 years from this uh, cdmo cmo space uh so the cmo cdmo opportunities are moving uh, fairly well uh we already have started seeing some contribution from uh, one of our european cmo opportunities uh, which will get reflected in quarter 3 of this year uh, so overall they are moving well uh, the full effect of the cmo cdmo you will be able to see in the next 2 years our anticipation is that in the next 3 years it should contribute closer to 20% of the total revenue okay and uh, and my second question is that uh, you know your guidance for ebitda margin had been in the range of 28 to 30% so uh, and that is conservative as compared to you know what we have seen in the recent quarters is it because you expect the share from uh, regulated markets to come down over next 2 to 3 years or what is the reason for that conservative guidance no actually we have uh, after the first uh, quarter's earnings call we have already said that we would like to revise our margin guidance uh, it will definitely be uh, higher than 28 to 30% uh, like i said uh, you know in what range of 30s it would be it completely depends in that quarter on the product mix and the geographic mix but what we would like to say is that in terms of the absolute ebit and the absolute pat value you will definitely see a growth Uh, from this year onwards okay and uh, can you also share you know uh, after this year what what is the uh, plan for capex if if there is any meaningful capex uh, planned by the company or budgeted so far uh, the current year we will be closing the a uh, module e and the ambarnath facility and i think beyond which uh, we might have to take up the module abc for our repairs i think which would be to the tune of around 100 crore which we will be taking it over phases i think that is something which we are planning at this stage and uh, the rest of it would be the normal capex which would be the maintenance capex for the uh, existing modules that's all uh, other than that we don't anticipate the next to wave of if at all if it has to come uh, would be the next level of expansions in patal ganga that would be something which we would be looking at at this uh, at around another two and a half to three years down the line is what we are thinking okay okay and so my last question is that uh, for fy27 we have shared uh, a guidance of 1000 crores does it include any contribution from oral cancer detection kit and scarf fee gel and uh, if not i mean what how is that shaping up both these uh, uh, areas and by what year can we expect any kind of significant breakthrough or developments 
in this regard. So no, it does not include any projections from the oral cancer kit. Uh, as of now, we don't have any projections in hand because this is still in clinical trials. Uh, but definitely the uh, overall global market for you know cancer detection kits is very, very large. Uh, so we can expect some commercial revenue to start coming in the next three years time. And uh, right now we will not be having any number to give you. But it will take at least three years for this product to commercialize. Okay. Okay. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratik Kothari. Yes, hi. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, Ma'am, one question. Uh, so when we say backward integrated, uh, uh, I mean, uh, how, how do we define that or how backward integrated are we? I mean, where do we start when it comes to any molecule that uh, we do? So backward integration means that we do not uh, rely on any advanced intermediate outsourcing from outside. In APIs, usually N minus one is, uh, you know, equivalent to a final product. Uh, most of the API manufacturing companies uh, before COVID, they were outsourcing N minus one or N minus two, and then only doing one or two stages in house. Uh, once you are getting the N minus two, N minus one, it is as good as you are getting the final product and just doing the powder processing, which is the final step. In this case, you have very little control on the costing of the product. Uh, in our case, we are backward integrated all the way up to the key starting raw material level. So in many products, we manufacture in-house as much as eight, nine steps. So basic raw materials, which are the basic inputs in our products, these are available cheaply and widely. And these are just basic chemicals, not only restricted to the pharma industry. So as such, there is no scarcity, shortage, or dependence on any one country for availability of these key starting raw materials. When you get these, usually the uh, contribution of these key starting raw materials to the final price of the API is also not very high. So that is how you get a complete grip on the costing of your product and it helps to bring the cost down. So this is why since the inception of the company, our chairman and our philosophy has been focusing on backward integration. Not only does it help with the cost uh, angle, it also definitely helps in the supply chain continuity. Also, impurity profiling, as far as regulatory is concerned, you have a far better grip as compared to when you are getting advanced intermediates from outside. Correct. And in terms of, say, identifying new products or getting into something new, uh, uh, this would also be a key, key criteria for us uh, before we uh, develop a new product. Yes. So eventually when we launch a new product, uh, we try to scale up that product in semi-regulated markets. And once it has reached a certain size, then we start focusing on backward integration. Uh, since we take the product, the eventual plan is that yes, we want to be fully backward integrated, but we do it in a phase-wise manner. Correct, correct. Uh, and then for the last three, four years, our gross margins used to be in 60s and for past two quarters at least we are in 70. So this is just a function of we shifting our focus to regulated markets or is this something else too? Yes, it is only us focusing on more regulated markets. Most of the products that we have in the current portfolio, uh, they are mature products where we already have backward integration, where we have already got all the regulatory approvals. Uh, so these products are doing really well in regulated markets and that is why you see the improvement uh, in the gross margins as well as in the EBITDA. Uh, what will happen is that in the quarter three, quarter four, when we start adding new products into the product mix, there will be some level of margin dilution which will happen because new products, uh, you know, usually scale up first in semi-regulated markets and then they mature into more regulated markets. Uh, so that's why we believe that there would be some slight margin dilution. But of course, we will grow in terms of revenue 20% plus year on year. And with that, uh, you know, definitely there will be an improvement in the absolute data and the patch numbers. Correct, correct. Uh, and then last on the LATAM opportunity, I mean, you did, I mean, and we are seeing that in numbers too, right? I mean, its proportion is increasing very quickly. Uh, so one, uh, I mean, one factor which was playing in our favor was this Chinese players did not have this GMP compliance and that is where we came in. Uh, so how hard is it for them to get this GMP compliance? And then uh, are you seeing any changes on their side where they have started taking this to kind of compete with us? 
See, basically, if you see in China, nobody bothers for GMP at all because so far, couple of years, everybody was greedy to buy from China and get the profits on a more higher side. In our case, we have decided that we will do everything at our end because we have GMP, CGMP, USFDA, UGMP, all factors in our uh, favor. So we consider our own policy and our things that we will manufacture rather than going to buy from China. So we don't worry about China. And even if you say and go to them and put GMP, they will not get GMP for another 10 years. That much we know because we have been going to China for at least not less than 25 years. Correct, correct, correct. No, great. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Upkanwalar from Invest UPN. Please go ahead. Yeah, most of my questions have been answered, but just uh, uh, to understand, sir, um, historically our margins have been uh, kind of uh, high, but there has been volatility across the years. The, the last instance was because our Chinese customer, I think uh, there was a drop. So we had a big um, jolt on the margins. So now that we've recovered to um, around close to 40%, um, how do you read this? How do we read this actually? Because today, today everything is going well. Um, probably the mindset is strong, and uh, also there are issues with uh, GMP, as you mentioned now, uh, for the Chinese players. So, uh, is there any threat to these margins again being volatile over the years? Any inventory situation and customer vendors? Uh, anything else that you would like to highlight? Or this is going to be stable at, uh, at these kind of margins? So, uh, like I said before also, uh, see quarter on quarter, there will be some uh, volatility in the margins because it depends on which product is going in which geography. And uh, most of our products, uh, some of them have already matured in regulated markets, some are still under registration. Uh, we will also be launching a lot of new products which will first scale up in semi-regulated markets. So depending on the product and geographic mix, you can expect that quarter on quarter, there will still be a little bit of volatility in the margin. But what we would like to uh, highlight here is on that annualized basis, we are expecting our margin trend to be somewhere between that 32 to 34% moving forward. And year on year, definitely you will see that in terms of the actual growth in the EBITDA number and the PAC number that you will be able to see very clearly. Uh, quarter on quarter guidance we will not like to give, but annualized basis, like I said, 32 to 34 percent is something moving forward. Also, we are confident that we will be able to maintain. Yeah, my point was mostly related to how do we look uh, on on annualized basis. Uh, so, if I have to take a view as to going two years ahead, will these margins suffice? So, you said say that uh, base would be 32 to 34. But uh, uh, one cannot say whether this 39 will um, stay stable or is it going to go down or up. Uh, that's what the reading is. Uh, am I right here? Yeah? Yes, so 32 to 34 percent would be stabilized because what will also happen is that we are introducing a lot of new products in the portfolio. Currently, what revenue you are looking at is mainly our existing mature products in regulated markets. But as we grow, our revenue base is also going to grow. The products which we are going to add, it will be more diverse portfolio. So with us growing much larger in top line, there will definitely be some dilution in the margin. But if you look at the absolute number of EBITDA, what we are doing today and what we will do in the next two years, you will see a significant growth. I would like to add on this. Uh, yeah. One more. Yeah. I will tell you the the Supriya's ideology. See, we don't manufacture any product which are being manufactured in India and we fight with Indian manufacturers. This is very clear. What we going to manufacture and what we are going to do is the products which are being catered from China to whole of the world. Now you understand, all over the world, where it is being supplied, the plants are non-GMP plants, but there is no manufacturer who is having a GMP, CGMP with the supplier buyers. That is why people are continuing to buy. 
Now you are seeing, like in America, there is a massive change that without GMP, they will not buy. Similar way, there are more and more uh, of the countries which are coming and we will be doing only chemistry based on the products which will hit China. There we are confident that we are telling our customers, please don't ask for any reduction in the price. This is our ideology because you should be happy that rather than a non-GMP plant, you are buying the material, even intermediate API from a US FDA plant. And that is being given a green signal to many of the multinationals and many manufacturers that they feel very much secured. We give end-to-end -end solutions, you know. We don't buy a N minus two, N minus three, N minus four. We go for the basic where mm -hmm. people use cyanide. Yes, we will use cyanide. cyanide. We will not avoid cyanide. And we will give the confidence. This is our ideology. So I'm sure we will definitely get a better EBITDA and better margins. And okay. security, sustainability to the business. Because people and the world expect that a good manufacturing USFDA plant is giving all this to them. Okay. Okay. So uh, continuing on this, I just wanted to uh, ask is uh, uh, for our set of uh, products, uh, which uh, typically would be small niches that we always target, uh, would there be competition when you are bidding for, uh, when you are uh, kind of convincing the clients to move from Chinese to your supply? Is there competition for that same pie or uh, we, are, we have a very good right to win over there uh, and less competition over there? Sir, why should the why should we say like this? Mm -hmm. Any buyer is being forced to buy because he has no alternative. Correct? Right. Everybody in the world is talking about GMP, CGMP. Impurity profiles are going down. That means everybody is curious and wants a good quality product. So in this case, if some qualified good manufacturer with all these things, with this facility comes, he will have some few days, but he will definitely change. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And so we've, we've heard this, um, uh, the, what you said right now, uh, I think uh, for last uh, three, four quarters. So how much of a uh, maybe all the business had that we would have won on this, uh, uh, this logic of ours? Uh, till now, or is it uh, still we are uh, work in progress, or or we have seen initial success in uh, this uh, endeavor of ours? Uh, so this is still work in progress. For some of our existing products, yes, uh, we have seen good traction uh, in Europe and Latin American markets. But uh, this philosophy and this will come in play in a very large way with some of the new products that we are launching. Uh, which you will be able to see uh, hopefully from quarter four of this year. But the full effect of the new product you'll be able to see in quarter three of next financial year. Okay, okay. And uh, X of CDMO, the new product that uh, we are launching now, what can be the contribution? I, mean, I understand it's very difficult to say, but what can be the contribution maybe two years out from these products on the top line at least? Is there uh, a way to map that? I mean, would you like to share that? I think it's very, very difficult to quantify, but we believe that should be in the range of around, say, 15% is something which is a, a possible number to have. Okay, so it's, it's a material addition that new products will do to our top line. Of course, yeah, of course, of course. Because most of these new products that we are launching, like our chairman said, the global volumes of these products are extremely high. And there is a lot of dependence on a single manufacturer for these products. So definitely we can expect to get very good volume traction uh, as soon as we launch these products. Right. Uh, and lastly, uh, given the revenues that we have achieved in the first half, I think 325 odd crores, um, it looks likely that with H2 being heavy, uh, we might be around 700 odd crores in the, this year. So uh, the guidance of, say, 1,000 crores for FY27, uh, the growth seems to be maybe in the range of, say, 15 odd percent. So is that, uh, is that really the picture that uh, you would like to give us, or is there a possibility of you things getting added here uh, on the driver? And this is a very conservative estimate that we are talking about. Yes, uh, this is definitely a very conservative estimate. 
uh, based on whatever projects are already in hand and the volumes where we have very clear visibility. But definitely with the Ambarnath facility getting launched with the module E coming in full effect and the new products also gaining traction in regulated markets, uh, there is definitely a very positive upside to this number that we have communicated. Okay, so uh, can we talk on a base case rather than a very conservative case, maybe uh, a 200 crore of top line which we used to talk uh, maybe around IPO that we, we intend to achieve this 200 crore mark uh, that was the uh, statement then. So the, is that something in light maybe in 27 or the uh, FI 27 or so it's, you would not like to maybe share your thoughts on that? Yeah. As of now, the base case is what we are looking at this 1,000 crore number here. I think uh, there, there could be a lot of upsides like what Dr. Saloni has said. The uh, higher utilization from Ambarnath, the higher utilization from Module E. See, as of now, we haven't factored uh, some of these numbers most probably during this year's budget. In fact, that is what I was just, just uh, talking to. Uh, the managing director as well as chairman today morning in, in our board meeting that we will start this process now and we will try and finalize this number. See, there could be a lot of upsides to this. Uh, the number yeah. of 1,000 crore, what you are saying is a base case. Yeah. That is the base case number we are talking about. So what are the drivers for this addition that might come? About yeah, like, like I said, you know, uh, this is our existing portfolio growing in regulated markets. Uh, some of the newer products getting traction in semi-regulated as well as regulated markets and then uh, contributing to revenue. And of course, the CMO, CDMO opportunities that we have both on the advanced intermediate API front as well as the CMO opportunities that we have on formulation front from Ambarna. So these are going to be the four or five major uh, growth drivers. And of course, Module E, what we have added, that is only going to facilitate the growth from uh, API and the new products. Okay. It might be a new therapeutic segment also. This is, I can tell you. Yes, sir. So, this, uh, I mean, my point was that you you are a pretty R&D focused company and your focus is very, uh, I mean, very, very sharp on uh, uh, what you want to, uh, what kind of business that you want to do on which products and stuff. That's why I thought that if there are opportunities which are beyond the realm of the 1,000 crores, I should know. That's why it was the only purpose. Uh, anyway, sir, uh, maybe we'll catch up one-on-one -on -one and try to understand more on where you're headed. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Does that answer all your questions, Mr. Ashton? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. We would like to make an announcement for the participants that please remember your questions, the three questions per time. The next question comes from the line of Shubham Harney from Purnartha Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations on good set of numbers. Just want to know the margin profile in LATAM market versus European market. So uh, we will not be able to, um, you know, give you numbers on country or region specific margin profile. Okay, and do you treat LATAM as a semi-regulated market or a regulated market? Also, LATAM we consider as a regulated market because uh, going by our experience, uh, because we recently also had an Anvisa Brazil audit and we have done nine product registration with Anvisa. Uh, so given our experience, uh, we feel the regulatory standards of uh, Brazil uh, and the Latin American markets are as stringent as USFDA or a Health Canada or a EDQM. So we classify that as a regulated market. Okay. And what's the status of USFDA audit which you have mentioned earlier in one of the calls? Uh, so we had our USFDA uh, in FY20 and after that we have not had any USFDA audit but beginning of this year in February we actually had a a desktop EDQM and Health Canada audit, which we have cleared. Uh, so we are not anticipating any USFDA audit happening immediately. We do have a China NMPA audit in December, but other than that, we don't have any major upcoming regulatory audit. Okay. Thank you so much and all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tuchar Bora from MK Ventures. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations to the management for a good set of numbers. 
Uh, first, a quick clarification uh, on the previous participant's question. Uh, while we may not have specific number for LATAM, but is it safe to assume that uh, LATAM margins are similar or maybe slightly better than the corporate average? Because a higher contribution from LATAM has not uh, prevented the margin profile from being uh, strong? Yes. Uh, so, like I said, the regulated margin profile is higher as compared to the others, and we consider LATAM to be a regulated market. So, it would be similar. Great. Uh, second, uh, uh, despite the uh, very, very strong uh, uh, gross margin performance, uh, 72%, uh, we've, uh, the EBITDA margins are in line with last quarter, primarily because of a significantly higher operating cost. Uh, should we assume that this is due to some of the build-up that we've had uh, in anticipation for you know, new product development, uh, either on the research side or maybe operating costs with the new facilities have already started coming in from this quarter? Yeah, I think some of the formulation and also some of the R&D uh, recruitments have already started, Pushari, as you are right. And the new plant, okay. even validations and all are going on, no? because before launching any API, we have to do all validations. So those things are going on. Got it, sir. Third, uh, quickly, uh, on the uh, CMO project, which uh, I think in the previous calls you mentioned as BSM, uh, do we assume that this 60 crore per year starting FY27, we are being conservative on the maximum annual potential uh, and or also on the launch timelines? Because I believe we've already launched this product or are going to launch, right? So, uh, the project with DSM is getting launched in three phases. We have already launched, uh, because it's a vitamin product, uh, it has applications across food, feed, and pharma. Uh, so, what we have currently launched is the feed application where you don't need any kind of regulatory approval. Uh, but for the food, you need the FSSAI approval, which we have just got last week. So next year, you will see the feed and the food volumes coming in. Uh, for the pharma volumes, we still have to wait for two years because these are mainly targeting extremely regulated markets like Japan, US, or uh, Euro. So once the CEP, the US DMF number, and the Japanese DMF, DMF number come, then only we can start seeing the uh, you know volumes from pharma. So it will take us uh, three years to reach that peak volume. After that, yes, uh, there is a possibility that the number could be higher uh, because both the companies, DSM as well as Supri, are aggressively looking at marketing this product. So there is definitely a potential for this number to be higher than uh, the 50-50 crores what we have indicated. Ma'am, are we also looking at other products with DSM potentially? Uh, yes, I mean, there is always a possibility because most of the multinationals, like our chairman said, they have been given a mandate to consolidate portfolios with good uh, manufacturers who have all the GMP and the regulatory requirements. So once we have established the confidence with DSM on this one project, there could definitely be larger opportunities there. As you also know that they have already sold off their API plants. They are sitting with the cash and they want to concentrate on vitamin sector only. So they... There will be a possibility that once we complete this project, another project will come from their end. That's a preliminary discussion has been taken place. Fantastic, sir. Uh, also, H2 revenues, uh, we are looking at higher than H1. Should we assume that with the DSM contract coming through, there is a CMO opportunity you had highlighted earlier in hospitals, some hospitals in this product, as well as uh, the wave protein opportunity. Some of these could start contributing in H2 and therefore we expect a significant bump up in revenue going forward? Uh, yes, so definitely uh, some volumes from DSM will be added in the H2 numbers. Uh, also some of the new products what we are launching in quarter three, uh, we are expecting them also to get some traction in the non-regulated market. Uh, for the whey protein project, we are just waiting for our licenses to come. We are waiting on our FSSAI license which also we are expecting should happen by end of quarter three. So with all these other products also contributing, we are expecting the revenue to be slightly higher as compared to H1. Uh, ma'am, last, one last question, if I may. Uh, just want to qualitatively understand some of the CMO, CMO opportunities we are pursuing. 
uh, going forward, uh, which where you may be, you know, some if you can give some color on the kind of opportunities we are pursuing, and if you can confirm that these will be in line with our margin guidance or higher in terms of the profitability potential for us. Also, if you can, you know, Dr. Vag mentioned uh, some new therapeutic area. If you can share a bit more details on that, please. So uh, definitely, most of the uh, contract manufacturing opportunities that we have on hand uh, are in line with the margin profile that we are currently doing. Uh, in fact, on the formulations and uh, in contract manufacturing, we expect the margins would be even better than what we are currently doing. Also, uh, definitely that aspect is taken care of. Uh, on the API advanced intermediate front, we have at least three or four opportunities which can start giving commercial uh, revenue from uh, quarter four or quarter one of next financial year. Uh, and on the Ambarnath side, definitely once the validation is completed, because Ambarnath side on formulation is also going to be only a contract manufacturing site. Uh, we are not currently planning on coming up with our own label. It would just be for contract manufacturing formulation. So definitely from quarter four uh, of this year or quarter one of next year, we can start seeing some revenue generating from there. But all would be in line with the current margin what we are doing. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. We'll join back in Thank you. Thank you.